Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM21 build a nation story from Bangor City with me, Daniel. We continue what's probably the final week today, and we've got history. It is a Champions League quarter final against Paris Saint Germain. Both legs in action today. We'll play Colwyn Bay off camera and focus entirely on a massive historic night for Bangor City Football Club. Remarkably, Paul Pogba is the man in charge of the French Giants here, having previously managed Tottenham and Wolves. And he's a very good one at that too. We've got a big game today. There's big moments for TNS as well. We'll get to that later on. We've also got a youth intake to review. And of course, we're edging towards the end of the series. We wanted it to be special, not to be underwhelming. Well, we might get even better tonight. If you're looking forward to all of that, please do chuck a thumbs up on it. Subscribe down below for daily FM21 content. You can find my FM22 plans in the eye above, as well as the Twitch channel, where we'll have regular live streams as soon as the beta's release. But let's get focused on PSG, because tonight we've got the biggest game in our history. We have never been in the Champions League quarterfinals before. If we can get to the semis, I might even start to believe, despite the fact we've got an awful draw if we get there. The thing that gives me hope today, PSG have got loads of players out. A couple unregistered, Bilardo suspended a £65 million four and a half star centre-half. He is officially the best centre-half in world football. The next one down, Julian Conlon, who's out with a hip injury, is a four and a half star central midfielder. One of the best five midfielders in the world with 101 England caps. Matthias Padilla is a Chilean international, a squad player for them, but more importantly, one of their natural backups to Conlon. He's unavailable today. And doubtful is Mohamed Benali. He is a fantastic player too, a left back and left winger. 35 years of age, but still pretty much got it physically and as good as anything we've got at the club. So PSG missing loads of big players. They've got loads of talent in the squad still. Bilardo is officially their best player, actually. But they've still got the likes of Dubai here, who 30-year-old Belgian stalwart. Mughal the striker, who is one of the best in world football, scoring over 1-2 in two for France in 62 caps. Matthias, a squad player, but a quality winger. There's a lot of players here that are still better than the standard we've got available to us. However, with three or four of them out, we've got more of a chance than we would have had otherwise. So I think we'd accept, looking at the players, it's a miracle if we get past PSG. But we've reached the Champions League quarter-final. I said I wanted history in this final and 20th season, and we've got it. Let's have a look at the schedule for our results off-camera. Just the three games since you were with me for that brilliant thumping of Inter Milan. A 3-0 win, a home to Carmarthen, as remarkably, we've not actually topped that result in any game since. Guevara, Reyes and Bulkley there. A bizarre two and a half week break before we're coming back midway through the international break. With Gordon, Reyes and Waters to score against TNS. And then a 2-0 win in a Welsh Cup semi-final on Saturday. A full reserve side face Cardiff Met Uni with Marcus Tranter and Geffen Davis getting the goals to give us a victory. We'll be placing Barrytown United in the final of that. Probably the final episode of the series, but that depends on whether we're still in the Champions League, which we will be if we get a victory today. So let's see what we can do. Before we get into it, though, we've got a youth intake and we've got to look at our rivals TNS because what a fantastic display from them. They beat Olympiacos 4-2 at home in the second leg. A take got another two goals. They won it in extra time with Cami Morrison, a very decent centre forward from Scotland. And the other man who scored, we've got to give them all a mention, Saiku Bojang is a right winger, is a good player. And he actually being back to fitness has meant a take can go through the middle. You've seen the difference that makes. The interesting thing, they've now got a winnable tie in the quarterfinals against Nîmes from France. We've seen before, bar the top two or three in France that we're obviously facing today, they're not actually the strongest opposition. They've got a lesser reputation than Olympiacos had. They've only got half a star more than TNS. Their key player is slightly better, but not much better than Aid Tate. And the rest of their squad, bar one, is greyed out. So I've got a sneaky suspicion TNS can push for the semi-finals. The question is whether we can do the same and join them. They've even got themselves back up to second in the Welsh Premier League, though Barry can decide that with their game in hand. That being played tomorrow as well. So we'll keep an eye on the first leg score from TNS in between the two legs of our game. But let's go and get into the first leg away in Paris. Once we've done that, we'll have a look at the youth intake between the two matches. 
but this is one hell of a night. So let's go and enjoy it. History to finish off this save, I hope. And this is the adjusted lineup we've gone for in the big game. We've got Roberto Simancas between the sticks. Had his odd dodgy moment this season, but still been a class act for us for some time. Ratings are that of a, what, average Premier League goalkeeper, but he's produced wonderful moments time and time again. At the back, we're basically littered with world-class stars now. Simmons and Fletcher, the full-backs, Jennings and Briones at centre-half, Mubarak Whelan sitting in front of them. Reyes and Reddy in the diamond, with Kyo Bulkley the number 10. He's just starting to find his best form now as we head towards the end of the season. And then I've taken the plunge. Lloyd Goulden above Kian Bulkley. Won the Next Gen Award as well, Kian Bulkley. Third place, A Tate in that award, bizarrely. Bojan Kavara's up front alongside Gordon. It's going to be a massive night for the two of them. But I've gone for pace in Paris. I'm hoping it'll pay dividends. And if, unlike Inter Milan, we can avoid giving ourselves a big mountain to climb, that would be absolutely lovely. We've got to accept we're playing world-class opposition. We're going to have to bide our time in this game. But we're in a Champions League quarter-final, and there's not much that can get the smile off my face now. So here we go then, the likes of Dembele, Deby, Enrique, ones that we looked at who were fit, all involved today. Mateus on the bench, but Mughal, the skipper and star striker up top. We've got to find a way to keep him quiet. We're going to ask the boys to prove a point. We're going to drop to our balance mentality. We're going to have to sit behind the ball a bit more tonight. We've got to avoid leaving gaps in behind. We've got to try and get some form of result. An away goal, an absolute essential. If we can avoid defeat... I might start to believe. Let's see if we can do it. As early doors, we've got a corner with Kyo Bulkley. Only the second minute here. The B heads clear to Rasso, and that does not look good. Counter-attack is on. Who intercepts? Nobody. Ben Margie nicks in. Gets into the box. Flying start for PSG. From our own corner as well. We have plenty of men back. We just didn't defend it sensibly. A minute and a half gone. PSG lead already. And we're going straight from the kickoff. It doesn't look good. Kyo Bulkley back to Briones. Into Ruben Reyes. Chance to play wide to Gordon. Got an overlap, but instead goes back to Whelan. He finds Simmons flying down the right-hand side. Chance to cross into the box. There's still four in there. We always have that. Back to Ruben Reyes. To Simmons. To the byline. Back to Reyes. Hits the man. He's deflected away. And we're not able to get back on terms. It's been an electric start to this match at both ends. Fletcher finds the ball to Jennings. And maybe that's the beauty. They do look a little susceptible in the fullback areas. We can get in behind them. We've got a chance. As Reyes picks it up again. Finds Briones. Long ball out to the left. Nobody's getting there. Rasso hoofs clear to Kellen Fletcher. Down the line towards Kavara. He's got Gordon in the middle. Another two making their way in. Kavara back to Kyo Bulkley. Blocked again to Reddy. Into the box to be hoofs clear. Somehow still 1-0 PSG. And we've got a throw on the left hand side. Going to be taken by Kellen Fletcher in line with the edge of the PSG box. Finds Kavara to Fletcher again. Give us that away goal. Fletcher into Kyo Bulkley. These boys do not know what is stopping them from making history. They continue to deliver against the odds. And we're back on terms with a crucial away goal. Problem on the right hand side as we reach the quarter of the game gone. Simmons has got a knock. He's been marauding down the right early doors. He's got that height at the back post against an inside forward. And I'm a little bit reluctant to bring Nenov on. I'm almost tempted to put Reddy at right back. And maybe bring on Gomez Garcia in the middle. Might be a stupid decision, but you never know. Or we could put Odal centre-half or drop Whelan in and put Briones out to the right. Simmons still going forward now, though. Do we just play him until he goes off? He doesn't look great there, does he? Doesn't look fit. Struggled in the challenge. And PSG bring it away to Sechi. Out to the left to Mora. Gets it wide to Flatterer. He takes on Simmons. Carrying that knock and not able to keep up. Into the box he goes. Good goalkeeping, Samanka. Steady hands as well. Let's go and make the change because it doesn't look good for Dion Simmons. Right, because their left winger is six foot with a jumping reach of 18. I've managed to get on Marcus Reddy at right back. Danny Gomez Garcia is now in the centre of the diamond with his international teammate Ruben Reyes. But at half time, we've been outplayed. But we saw this at the new Camp a couple of years ago. We can FM teams now. We've got that variety in our play where we can be defensively solid and then hit teams on the counter. And today, so far, we've done that. We've got a better expected goals despite only having one shot on target. If we get to the hour mark at one all, I think we'll be delighted with our night's work. Lloyd Gordon not having the best match in the world. 
So I am going to replace him with Kian Bulkley. Maybe just get a focal point, a target man up there so it sticks. That we may lose out on the pace front. As Gomez Garcia heads away a throw into Robert. He's got time on the ball to Carlos Enrique. Switches left to Fladderer. He's got him behind Ready there, who's not used to playing full back. And Kellen Fletcher sliding in at the back stick. Has unfortunately scored an own goal. So I think we're going to have to make the change. I'm going to do it at right back. Ready replaced by Nenov. Please don't be a stupid decision as Reddy gives it away from the throw-in. Only as far as Kyo Bulkley. Cuts it back to the edge. Kian Bulkley. Oh my words. Putting him on the bench has made him angry. And an angry Kian Bulkley is a marvellous one at the moment. Two away goals in Paris against world-class opposition. And the Next Gen Award, the European Golden Boy Award. All thoroughly deserved. And if someone doesn't trigger his release clause in the summer... They're absolute idiots in truth. 10 minutes to go. It's 2 all in Paris. We're not far from the time-wasting stage. As Nenos throwing is cleared away on the right-hand side. Oh, imagine we nick it. Mubarak Whelan's coming forward. Loses possession. The concern is if we let in late goals. Kavara gets there. We're pressing brilliantly. Even this late in the game. We look fit. We look fighting fit. And we're getting in behind again. Kavara to Kian Bulkley. Good save by Grima. We are in dreamland at the moment. We are competing with the very best sides in world football on the very biggest stage. Kaio Bulkley delivers the corner. That's not very good. We've got six minutes to hold on for a famous result. As it's a goal kick for Simancas, taken short to Briones. Out to Nenov at right back. Still a very good player, just not got the height. As Reyes plays it up to Bulkley. It sticks with the target. He's released his namesake, Kaio. Oh my words. <laughs> what a goal. Kyo Bulkley released by Kean. It is PSG 2. Bangor City 3. Four minutes plus stoppage time to go. We've got a genuinely brilliant chance of reaching the Champions League semi-final. We couldn't, could we? Let's get the wing-backs back to defensive duties. In fact, they can be full-backs on defence. They are going nowhere. We will also do... Oh, I don't know what else. I don't know what else. I'm going to do the old classic. Drop Kyo Bulkley in. He's going to go as an advanced playmaker on support in there. We've only got stoppage time to hang on. And in fact, Kian Bulkley can be the number 10. He'll be a shadow striker behind Kavara. I'm not sure if that works. I'm not sure how it's going to manage. But if we can win 3-2 in Paris, we have got a great chance of making it. So we're going to time waste all the time. We are going to slow the pace down. We still want to counter. We're going to drop the defensive line, the line of engagement. We're not going to press the goalkeeper. We're going to try and cling on for the most famous result in our history. Five minutes of stoppage time separate us from having the job halfway done. That's an incredible result. Kian Bulkley off the bench made a massive difference. Deserves a world of credit. Kyo Bulkley, our biggest star on the biggest stage, delivers. And it's two youth intake prospects from many years ago that have delivered the hammer blows in Paris. All we've got to do at home is avoid defeat. And we are through to the Champions League semi-finals. And I know that we've just won in Paris and we've maybe not dominated the stats. But looking at the expected goals, we match them in possession. We're pretty good value for it. Now let's go and see if TNS can complete the miracle in France. Because if both sides can get to semi-finals... This will be the finish I didn't think was possible. I really thought this was petering out. I might be about to be in dreamland. Let's go and get to the second leg. Well, it's been a busy week as we come back for the return fixture against PSG. Again, Kyle Bulkley picked up an injury in the meantime. Says he's short of full fitness. I think I'm going to play him regardless. I've done it before and it's worked occasionally. But so frustrating that happens every time. Leon Simmons just about back. I'll probably risk him too. But that could be two of the subs gone. Let's have a look at our result of the weekend against Colwyn Bay. A fan day, not a success. A 1-0 victory. Young Nathan Roberts got the goal there. That's the positive. We went so weak. You can see Martin Stokes from the under-18s. Never good enough to make it. Pope played up front as well. Josh Ridd went in the holding role. He can't even play in that position. Jack Chapman was covering right back. I mean, we were all over the shop. But we got a 1-0 win. And that shows where the rest of the league is. TNS... Against the French opposition at home, got a draw. They're still in the tie. No goal for Aid Tate, but now they've got a chance to complete the miracle in France. We'll keep our eyes peeled on that. 
We did promise though that we'd have a look at the youth intake, so let's go and get that up quickly. These are the remaining candidates who aren't great. I mean, Dave Wood's a decent one. My hope is if we didn't sign him, he'd go to somewhere else, but I feel like he's someone we might want to sign. Probably better than any of our players at the start of the save, which shows how far we've come. Liam Davis is a winger, so no point gambling there. The same for Gager as well. However, let me show you the few that have been signed so far to the under-19s. Probably Wood will be the only addition to that. So David Clark is the first one. He's a 16-year-old centre-half who, yeah, three-star potential, one-star ability. He's all right. Mark Hughes, maybe the slightly better one. Irish player, one-star ability, three-star potential. Right-footed right-back, not the best personality. Has got the potential in terms of attributes and the key areas to produce a decent footballer out of him. So they're the positives. Not really much else going on, to be honest. Matthew Coleman was also signed. Yeah, he's not great at the moment. And Richard George, another centre-half as well, but not a great deal there. I'd actually argue that Wood might be the best one out of the youth intake. We're going to sign him anyway. But Dave Clark and Mark Hughes, the only other two that might help Welsh football. Let's go and get into our second leg, though, because it is all about this tie. We are playing the winner of Bayern Munich versus Manchester City. And to be honest, I kind of hope it's Bayern because we've seen what City can do to us before. The other semi-final is Celtic v Liverpool. So imagine if we managed to fluke our way to the final and drew Celtic. It'd be like a dream come true getting a weaker side than Rafe Rovers. For now though, we've got to get through the second leg. We've had a, a sketchy win at the weekend, but we hold a 3-2 advantage as we go to host PSG. Let's get ourselves Kyo Bulkley back in the starting lineup. Geffen Davis will very much be needed on the bench. We'll make the other changes needed. Simmons is fit enough to play. Reddy's going to play in the middle. And Kian Bulkley, after his cameo, shall we say, off the bench last week, will definitely be starting up front. Who's the other one that doesn't normally make the bench? It's Kane Walters. So I'll drop him out for Nathan Roberts, who scored at the weekend and who may be needed given Kyo Bulkley's fitness. But this is the lineup we're going for. It's exactly the same as last week. Barkey and Bulkley coming in. And that could be the most positive change of all. If he plays like he did the last half an hour in Paris, we could be in for a treat. 3 2, we lead on aggregate into the second leg. Cross your fingers, cross your toes, cross everything else. The miracle might not be far away. The excitement, the tension, the potential for anguish is building. Bilardo is back, the skipper for PSG, their star man. Everything else is just about the same. Rasso is the man who drops out, who wasn't the best, to be honest, offensively in the first leg. And now Moogle, without this captaincy up front, probably will deliver an even better display. We'll get the lads motivated, we'll drop to balanced, we'll get into it at the race course. We should be selling out this stadium for a game of this magnitude. I just hope we can sneak through. I don't care how we do it at this point. A one goal defeat at home, but without conceding three, a draw or a victory. Any of those and we're in the last four. Please, please let it happen. 15 minutes on the clock almost, as Simmons has a throw on the right to Ruben Reyes. In a decent start, not a lot happening, which suits us down to the ground. Bulkley to Simmons, we wouldn't mind a goal here. Reyes to Bulkley to Reddy. Oh, he caught that all right, didn't he? It's a corner kick for the visitors. Ben Margie takes it into the back post. Dubai loses out to Whelan. Excellent defending. Mora can go down the left. The danger's not gone yet. Bulkley chasing him out there. He's working so hard for the team. He's absolutely shattered. We don't want to waste that early doors. McKeon Bulkley holds it up. And that's what we need from him. The highlight ends a quarter of the game down. So far, so good on the scoreline. So it's another corner for the visitors. Half an hour on the clock now. Carlos Enrique puts it in. Bellardo hits the post. And it comes off the back of Simancas to go in. I mean, I know he's had his moments this year. But you can't do a lot about that. It's just misfortune. It's 1-0 PSG. We're still going through at the moment. But I can't see it staying like this. We've not had a shot on target. We've not pushed them. And Mora has got a chance to bring it forward again. Back to Bellardo. who's made a huge difference for them. Of course, not least, leading to the goal there. Surging down the right-hand side. Chance to cross. Fletcher intercepts it. It's back to Carlos Enrique. And it's just wide. We are clinging on in there. Let's demand more because we're not really competing at the moment. With five to the break, we could really use a goal. As Kavara gets it left-hand side. Back to Kellen Fletcher. To Reddy. To Fletcher. Reddy over the top for Kavara. We could do with a moment of magic. Into Kian Bulkley. Just over the bar. Remains 1-0. 
but that's a good chance. That's something we haven't created all half yet. As we reach the break, still no shot on target, but still, as it stands going through, and after 135 minutes of this tie, I would have taken that at the start. So Mancas gets the ball to Briones. Got a man over on the right in Dion Simmons. I wonder how much longer Bulkley can last in truth. I was just hoping for one minute of magic from him. Up to Guevara, down for Kian Bulkley. Kyo Bulkley to Guevara. Oh, he's delivered the assist. Doesn't matter if he's fit or not. That through ball is something only Kyo Bulkley does in that role. Kavara puts it into the corner. We've got a crucial goal. Now PSG are back to needing two more goals. As Flatterer puts a free kick in. Don't let them get it straight away. A simple set piece on Mora. And after all of the brilliance, all of the hard work, we've thrown it away on a set piece. We're still going through as it stands, but I can't see us hanging on for half an hour. As bellardo has got a throw on the right-hand side. Then Margi loses out to Whelan in the air, but it falls for Mora. He goes wide to Bellardo. Chance to cross again. Flader is there. Good save, Simancas, down to his right. I feel like I've got to change something in a minute, but I don't really know what. As Chedins gets the ball at centre half, can bring it away, but nothing doing. We've scored with our only shot on target, and this time we're lucky to still be ahead in the tie, or at least level with away goals in our favour. As Briones plays out from the back to Dion Simmons. Come on, give us a counter attacking starlet. Simmons over the top. Kyle Bulkley can't get there. Kian Bulkley chases. Nobody can win it. Mora finds Sechi over the top to Mughal. They're getting in too easy. And I think that's curtains for the tie now. The dream was nice while it lasted, but PSG just too strong. Let's go and make changes. Let's go positive, but I think it's too little too late. Changes made then. Gordon up front for pace. Fletcher's now picked up a knock straight after the three changes. Nathan Roberts on for the injured Kyo Bulkley. Gomez Garcia on for the poor performing uh, Reyes. Fletcher at left back's now got a knock. We've gone positive to no avail. And we're going to go out by one goal on aggregate. And it's the home leg that's cost us. That doesn't often happen. A brilliant effort from the lads over two legs. I mean, at the start, this would have been a minor miracle. But given the position we were in after the away leg, we really thought we had a chance. So it does finish in disappointment, albeit after making history with Bangor City. We go out at the Champions League quarter-final stage. And now the only team with a chance of winning a European trophy is TNS in the Conference League. Let's go and see what result they get on Thursday night. Heartbreak for TNS 2. They lose on away goals, an even slimmer margin for them. A 0-0 draw in France after the one all draw at home. And unfortunately, they fall out of the Europa Conference League. So both of us fall in at the quarterfinals. So let's see how that's affected the coefficient. Because obviously for those of you taking over this save, you'll want to know where it is. A good year for Wales, 9.6 overall, getting close to Austria again, and Austria next year, interestingly, losing a much bigger year than Wales, so actually a chance to return back to ninth next season, and there might be five professional sides in Europe for Welsh football, because Carmarthen have wrapped up fourth, now it just comes down to who wins the playoff, if it's Cardiff Met Uni or Swansea Uni, there's trouble, if it's Colwyn Bay, that's ideal, if it's Barla, it's not a disaster. But we're going to be back for the final game of the series, which will be the Welsh Cup final. A chance to wrap up our final trophy at the end of our 20th season. And then a perfect way to end the week will be the final bookmark. The 20 year mark will have a look at everything and hopefully reflect positively on the progress that we and Welsh football has made. Next week we'll see our five years in the future. We'll see how quick all of this disintegrates. Then FM22 will not be far away. So if you did enjoy this episode, please chuck a thumbs up on it. Heartbreak at home to PSG. I really thought we were going to do it for a minute. And TNS, bless them. They've had a bad season, but they got even closer than us. If you want to stay up to date with the rest of this season, subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. You can find links in the eye above to the podcast channel, the Twitch channel for regular live streams, and to our FM22 plans video from the weekend. A massive thank you for watching, for supporting as always. It is greatly appreciated. And I'll see you tomorrow for the final regular episode of this long old series as we play Barrytown United, the old foe, in the Welsh Cup final. Uh -huh.